So I've got kind of a personal question for you right now. How am I looking to you right now? I, I don't mean how am I looking. I mean, how am I looking? Are you getting nice, crisp, clear, high definition streaming here on YouTube? Or are you getting kind of jittery, ugly, not so good like this streaming, which really sucks on YouTube? What's your bandwidth like? That's what we're gonna explore today on Dotto Tech is how to know if you're getting the bandwidth you're paying for from your internet service provider and a few tips on what you can do about it if you're not. That's all coming up today on Dotto Tech. Stu Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? At Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. And what I am going to try and help you do more of today is more serene and happy web browsing. There is a actual correlation between our personal sense of well-being, our own happiness, and the amount of available bandwidth and how robust the internet is on our device of choice. Is there not? Do you not always feel better when you go to a website and it opens quickly or when you stream a video and everything streams smoothly and are you not frustrated as can be when you have internet connectivity issues it takes away a certain amount of happiness and joy from us each and every day so we look to get as good a quality internet access as we can and internet service providers advertise varying packages of bandwidth to provide us with better quality throughput but how do you know if you're getting a good deal how do you know if you are actually getting what you are paying for that is what we're going to talk about today here on dotto tech but before i do this particular episode of dotto tech is brought to you by our friends at blinkist blinkist is the fastest way for you to read books non-fiction books i should put that caveat in non-fiction books blinkist takes all the popular non-fiction books and breaks them down into 15-minute reads, capturing the most important and most salient points that the author wants to share and making it easy for you to digest. I am a huge fan of Blinkist. We did a video on it recently and there will be links in the description below. But if you want to get smarter, faster, Blinkist is a darned good path to that goal. Now, let's get into measuring our internet speed and making sure that we are indeed getting what we are paying for. Now, there's a variety of different services that will measure our internet speed. We'll get into using those uh, and the ones that I like to use and why I like to use them in a moment. But before we get to that, we have to kind of take a step back and take a look at the nature of our connection to the internet. Because just because we have a fast connection to the internet, that doesn't mean that's always gonna translate into performance with whatever it is we're trying to do online. For example, if you're watching a streaming video, you might have blazingly fast connection to the internet, but if the server that's serving you the video is having issues or there's some slowdown in the connection between it and your connection, then you might not be getting great service. So there are multiple moving parts. Essentially what happens, and I apologize if this is oversimplifying, but you have your connection to your internet service provider. They have servers there, but all of the internet doesn't live on their servers. Their servers are merely connection to other servers that have the different types of information that you're going to be looking for. The information is stored in a vast array of different storage locations and servers across the interwebs. Now, if you are, say, watching a Netflix, Netflix video, the Netflix servers are serving the video to and through your internet service provider server to you. And there might even be some intermediaries between there. If there's a slowdown or bottleneck anywhere in that system, you will suffer, even though your initial connection to, the, uh, to your internet service provider is indeed as fast as you expect. And that problem is exacerbated when we talk about things like webinars, where somebody else has their connection to the internet going up to the server that's providing the internet services that is then connecting to your server that is then connecting down and you can see now how many moving parts there are and so that even though you you have a great connection between yourself and the internet and your main server that doesn't always translate into high performance but we can only do what we can do and we have control over this first link or at least we have control with our relationship between our internet service provider and us. So that's what we're going to take a look at is that first link, the first mile uh, and making sure that we have a good connection. Now to give you a frame of reference, in our new offices here on my new home studio, we have fiber to the wall, which is one of the reasons that I got was so excited moving into this particular location is it's basically as fast a service as you can get on average now in a domestic location at a home. It's, it's as good as it gets. 
pretty much today. So you'll see my real readings. It's a Sunday morning. Uh, I believe my wife might be watching Netflix right now, so there might be a little bit of load on our network. Uh, but you're going to see some real world statistics. Now, the, what we want to do is we want to measure the connection between our home, our, our, our server and our router here, and the internet service provider. And as I say, there's a couple of different services that you can use. Now, these are really kind of frustrating services to use. Here's the one that is probably the most popular, and it's the Ookla speed test. I think it's Ookla. How do you pronounce it? It's their, their name is here. The yeah, Ookla. I always think that's a funny name. Uh, but this is one of the most popular services online. And they, if you just go, and we'll have all the links in the description below, but to speedtest.net, you can do a quick test of what your internet connection is. Now, be careful when you go to these all of these sites because they don't make their money off of their service. They make their money off advertising. So if you take a look at any of these sites, they're, they are wrapped with ads. They are all over the place. We have just so many ads that we have to kind of work our way through. And you have to make sure that, and some of the ads will try and make it look like the, it's the button that you're looking to, to click on to check your speed. So be careful of that. But all that we're going to do is we're just going to go and we're going to ask it to do a test. Now what it does then, once it does that, is it measures the connection speed between you and the server. And it's going to measure two different aspects of it. It's going to measure how fast the download speed is, which is what we're most often concerned with, because that relates to how fast we can browse the web and get to different websites. But most importantly, it relates to how well our streaming is going to work if we're watching Netflix or YouTube or some other online service. And as you can see here, I've got what I consider to be very fast internet. My download speed is 174 megabits per second. That's how much data can come to my computer. And my upload speed, which is how fast I can and deliver data to the internet is uh, about the same at 172 megabits per second. So I've got what I consider to be really good throughput. Now to put it in perspective, what do you need to stream say Netflix video? What's recommended by Netflix? Well, they actually tell us and Netflix and, and uh, there are other services. Now again, we'll have all of this posted in the description below or even better, we'll have a blog post at the Dotto Tech site describing all of this, which you can visit. But Netflix says that really you should have in order to be able to Stream Netflix HD comfortably about five megabits per second download speed. That's all you need. So we obviously are in far in excess of that. So we can easily handle uh, Netflix video with this with this connection as we should be able to. But it's a lot less than you might think that you probably require uh, as far as as far as the actual technical bandwidth. Now that doesn't mean we're going to get that because of all those other vagaries in place. But it gives you an idea to give you some idea of some other services that you might be interested in. If you are streaming video to the web. If you're stream, live streaming, say, to Facebook Live or you're hosting a webinar, typically speaking, the different services will tell you you require between about two and six megabits per second to effectively deliver video content streaming and encoded from your computer and uploaded. And again, there are other variables included there, such as how fast your own computer can encode the video, etc., as you send it up. But that gives you an idea. And again, we will have all of these listed below. Farley, is, are you interested in bandwidth? Brief pause to pet the dog. I'll be right back. I'm back from dog petting. Now here's the thing. You don't necessarily want to just use a single service because if you are not getting the throughput that you are expecting to get, uh, the, all of these services aren't equal as far as how they measure it. They're going to measure on local servers or different servers that they have systems on. So you're only going to get a general idea of how good your internet speed is from any one of these services. So typically speaking, I like to test multiple ones. Now, another one that I think is really quite good is called the speed of dot me and we can do a test on it and it's going to give us the same basic information laid out slightly differently. Again, a whole new collection of ads surrounding the screen, uh, but we're going to be able to kind of do a, a, a reality check of what the first of what speed test told us now with speed of me. Now, speed of me always comes back with a much slower download speed than the others for me. And that's probably because of where its servers are located that it's testing. It's how long it takes the data to come from those servers. It's giving me the same or even a better upload speed, which is good. Uh, but the download speed now it says is only 43.9 megabits per second, uh, which is far below what the, the speed test told me, but still well within the ranges of what I should expect in order to have good quality streaming service. But if I was to call my internet service provider and say, I'm only getting 43 megabits per second and I'm paying for 180 megabits per second, they would say to me, why don't you come to our server, our test site, 
and check it out. So each of you has an internet service provider and they have their own speed test tool. So you're gonna wanna go and test that, but here's the deal, take a look. Do you see that logo? It's pretty much the same tool as the first one that I used as speed test. It's from Ookla. And so it's probably going to come back with very similar results. And indeed, it came back with the results almost exactly the same as the original test. The last measurement site I want to go to is one that is application specific. It's called fast.com and it des is designed to specifically measure your performance for Netflix, which is so important to many of us. You want to go into the show more information where in the detail screen here, you see that it is attaching to and connecting to the Netflix servers directly. I think using these services will give you a great idea of the overall health of your own internet connection and testing it at a few different times during the day will help as well. But there are other factors that are going to determine what your performance is at home. The performance of the wireless router that you have and also the performance of your modem, your connection point to the internet. So if you aren't getting the throughput that you think you should be getting, make I would first of all, I would restart all of the devices in the system and test again. I know restarting probably should not make a difference, but it does. We all know that restarting makes a difference. So make sure you're working from a fresh connection and also make sure that your wireless connection is good or you've plugged in. You're going to get the best performance from having a wired connection to your router and to the modem. Uh, so that's the probably the best way to be testing. And actually I do. This particular computer that I'm testing on today is wired directly in. I'm not using wireless in this particular test. Uh, but if you are having issues, then reach out to your ISP. They might have an updated modem that they can give you. They might have you, there might be something in their settings that aren't delivering the speed to you that you are expecting, or there might be some other options they have for increasing your bandwidth. Because at the end of the day, happy family equals healthy bandwidth, at least as far as I'm concerned. I hope you found today's video to be interesting. I'd love to hear your comments below. If there are some services that I missed that you use to measure your bandwidth that you'd love to share with me, I would love to see what you have to say. And if you want, you can brag a little bit and tell me how good your bandwidth is as well. We can compare bandwidth if you would like. If you've not yet subscribed to Dotto Tech, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.